Hello, everybody. I uh, want to thank you all for joining me tonight on our Facebook Live. As you know, this is our infidelity recovery uh, series that we do every single Monday at 7.30. Or, I'm sorry, 9 p.m. And I just want to let you know that we're going into our second month here. We've received a tremendous uh, amount of uh, response and support. People who are very interested in figuring out how they can make their relationships work. Hey, Pearl, thanks for joining us. And I just want to let you know that as we enter into 2017, hey, Ma, my mother's there. Wow. First time I'm seeing my mom. I'm sure she's been on before. Um, as we enter into 2017, we're going to be doing some major expansion with Couples Academy in terms of our live broadcast. Just so you know, every single Monday at 9 p.m. is Infidelity Recovery. However, on Wednesdays um, during lunch hour at 1 p.m., my wife will be joining me. And we will be doing a series called Married to the Business. So for all of you couples who are in ministry together, who have a business together, who want to make major impact together, that will be your opportunity uh, to receive great information and to even ask questions and get answers about how you can uh, level up in the area of your business. Uh, and then on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m., within our private group, we have a group called The Audacity of Marriage, and it's consistent with... Hey, Clarence, good to see you. It's consistent with the book that we just released. Every single Thursday evening at 7 p.m., we're going to be doing a message in a series that's going to last for quite some time, really giving people the nuts and bolts of what it takes to make a, a marriage work, teaching the 10 principles of lifelong partnership. Uh, and so before we get started, once again, I just want to remind you to get the book. It is available uh, on Amazon or Kindle. Um, also, go to... Um, your app store, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, and download the Couples Academy app. There's some great information, and we are relaunching our podcast in 2017, so there's a lot to look forward to. But tonight I want to talk about a topic that I'm sure has impacted many people who have experienced the pain of infidelity. I received an email uh, from a woman who watches regularly, uh, who's having a struggle recovering, particularly with her husband, because her husband, in this case, doesn't understand um, the recovery process uh, and wants to speed up the process. And his main thing is just get over it, just move on. Why do we still have to be stuck in this place? And so what he wants, what she wants to communicate with him is that sometimes it takes time. That, you know, you can't, you can't cook certain things in a microwave and expect it to come out good. Some things have to simmer over the course of time. Some things you've got to boil. Some things are a slow process. And if you are respectful of that process, then both partners can come out and win. It becomes mutually beneficial. But as long as someone's trying to race the other partner uh, through this process, you both lose. And so tonight I kind of want to talk about um, what some of the long-term effects are for couples who don't receive the help that they need. I give this analogy all the time, that if any of you have ever been on a plane before, you know that when a plane lifts off of the ground, 90% of that journey, 90% is off course meaning it's going in the wrong direction and that the only way that is able to get to its final destination is that there's a radar system or a cock you know inside the cockpit that's constantly guiding that plane to get from point A to point B. That is the only way that a plane can get there. Likewise, when you're working with a professional or you're seeking some type of help or you belong to a community of like-minded individuals that are on the path to recovery, they in essence become that radar system for you. So in essence, you're not doing it on your own. Now, how many of you could get in the cockpit and fly a plane? I, very few of you. You will crash and burn. And oftentimes our efforts are just like that. When we're trying to recover on our own, when we're trying to make our relationships better on our own, many of us crash and burn. And for those that stay together and overwhelmingly, when an affair has taken place in a marriage, most couples stay together. So it's not the affair that in, in essence breaks the marriage, it's how either or both partners refuse to show up after the affair has been discovered. And oftentimes, this can be a long, drawn-out, painful process when we refuse to get the help that we need. And so oftentimes, what a, par a partner goes through um, is what we would call a form of loss, a grieving process. So just as someone may lose a family member or lose an animal or lose a significant relationship permanently, there is a loss that takes place within the realm of your relationship. 
And so the recovery process is quite extensive. So we've heard it all before, you know, a person who's had a loved one who's passed away. They're taught, listen, you're going to grieve for a while, but eventually you'll get back to normal. But if you speak to anybody who's had significant loss in their life, they will tell you that that pain never really goes away. That feeling, they never truly get over it. It never just gets better. Uh, but over the course of time, you're able to function. You're able to, to deal with circumstances in a particular way because you have coping mechanisms. You have techniques that make your journey easier. But that loss is there for quite some time. And so if you do not get the help that you need, you're going to feel that loss in a major way. So there are two kind of things I want to talk to you about quickly tonight. Number one, when you initially find out about an affair, there is this uh, roller emotional roller coaster experience that you that you go through, and it will be consistent with someone who's experienced post-traumatic stress disorder. And so I just wrote down a number of characteristics that typically people come to me with when they're trying to restore their marriage. Number one, it's a major blow or it's a damage to a person's self-worth or self-esteem. You know, one of the greatest challenges is uh, a person who's always comparing themselves to the affair partner. Am I as pretty as she? Do I have a body like she does? Do I have the level of security that my spouse sought out in this person that I couldn't provide? And so feelings of inadequacy begin to creep up in the mind of the hurt partner because they feel like they're just not enough. It's consistent with a person who has a spouse that is into porn, right? So some people think, well, porn, what's the big deal? Fine, I'm looking at naked bodies. Fine, I go to the strip club every now and then. It doesn't mean that I don't love you. I'm with you, aren't I? But what that does is when your eyes become fixated on someone else, it creates uh, insecurity in the spouse because they feel like they're not beautiful enough to hold your attention, that they don't offer enough to, to, to make sure that your focus is exclusively on that person. So if it can, be, if it can take place within the, the confines of pornography, how much more when an affair has occurred? And so the blow to the self-esteem is so huge and so picking up those pieces is quite a journey then there's the loss of the emotional security so oftentimes we hear people say you're just so insecure and you're right when you've been cheated on there is insecurity that takes place but understand what that means it means that the person is no longer secure in the relationship that they're in because they're not sure of when the next opportunity will come. And so they're always looking behind every corner, waiting and anticipating the fear of what may occur. Now, interestingly enough, no hurt partner wants to experience it again, but there's a level of fear and anxiety that takes over them. And so they're always looking for the next opportunity in any behavior of their partner that is in any way familiar with the behavior that that partner had during the affair automatically they're they're making connections they're they're attaching associations to that behavior and so it kind of sets them back <clears throat> and so ultimately what i'm saying is the hurt the, the the hurt partner needs to receive a level of support from the unfaithful partner as they go through this journey i remember and i share this story every now and then i was on um the bill cunningham show a couple years ago and there we are uh, I'm the media expert and we're dealing with infidelity and there's a, a there's a, a gentleman who's saying to his girlfriend on stage, why don't you just get over it? I apologize, all right? Get over it. And so I gave him the example. I said, if I ball up a fist and I punch you dead in your face and knock you on the ground, right? You're going to experience physical pain. Now that pain may last for two hours to possibly two days, depending upon how hard I hit you. But eventually you'll get over it. But when you have had certain things take place within the realm of your relationship, there is an emotional pain that occurs. And that can take two months to two years, statistically would say, that it takes an upwards of two years for all of the pain to truly go away and for you to begin your journey all over again. Now that is when you're not receiving the help that you need. If you're getting the help that you need, many couples have been able to recover much, much, much sooner than that. But it requires that you be intentional in your efforts. But the point that I was making to him is you just can't get over it. It's not that simple. And the journey that you're experiencing is different than the journey that your spouse is experiencing. And so there's got to be a level of understanding and compassion and support uh, that you provide your partner as they go through this journey. Uh, in terms of the emotional uh, roller coaster or the emotional scale, right? We talk about the intensity of emotions. It can go anywhere from deep, 
sadness, a person who's just very melancholy. They're always sad. They're always down. Their favorite color is blue. Uh, they almost have, you know, just a negative disposition. They can be very cynical. They can be very pessimistic. They see the glass as half empty instead of half full. That becomes the paradigm by which they view all situations in life because <clears throat> they haven't been able to properly pick up the pieces and recover from the affair. So the affair, even though it happened within the realm of their marriage, it impacts every area of their life, how they interact with their family, how they interact with their friends, how they show up for work, how they serve in ministry. So it takes more than just relational restoration to fix a person. There is that personal recovery process that a person must go through as well. And when they do that, then therefore healing comes to all relationships. And then there are those that are just depressed. And one thing about depression, when you're depressed, you just don't feel like doing anything. This is an individual that could literally be in the, day, in, in the bed all day long. There's no, there's no passion, there's no desire like, to, to do anything. You just rather just sleep your life away. And so this is a very, very, very crucial experience that many people experience if they're not getting the help that they need. But then on the other side of the pendulum, you have those that are drenched in anger and rage and have a desire to seek revenge because of what has happened. And so, you know, I kind of give an example um, about if you could see this, this is a candle with a flame inside. And if I were to force your hand over this flame long enough, you will begin to feel the heat of the flame. Now, who am I to tell you how you should react? The longer my hand is under here, I may jump, I may scream, I may cry, I may act in rage, I may attack, vengefully so, it's going to manifest in different ways depending upon who the person is. And so there's no way that you can legislate what somebody goes through. But whatever they are going through, there is a path of recovery to get them out of that. And so whether you're on uh, the, 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 the side of sadness and depression or whether you're in, in rage and anger, there's a process to bring you, <clears throat> in essence, closer to the middle so that you can continue your journey of recovery. But another thing that uh, individuals struggle with when there uh, is infidelity in a relationship is just the fear, right? The fear of the unknown. The fear of, if I open up my heart and, and attempt to trust you again, I'm just not sure if I'm gonna be hurt. I'm not sure if, 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 if we're gonna wind up in this same situation. And, and so as a result of that, I'm going to put up these walls because these walls are protecting me in my mind from the inevitable, what is bound to happen again. And so there's a whole lot of anxiety, you know, when it comes to interacting with not only my partner, but trusting anyone. Because if the person that I love the most could violate me, then what's keeping you from doing it? And there's, there's no attachment here. So these are some of the things that people struggle with. And then there's, you know, uh, the lack of focus. The lack of concentration, just not being able to function effectively on your job. And so all of a sudden, your coworkers and your boss and your supervisor, they're noticing that there's just something different about you. You know, there's just a, a different energy. There's a, there's a different disposition that you're displaying. Is anything going on at home? And so what happens at home spills into your professional life. Um, in terms of a focus, think about it. The word focus, it's an acronym. It means to follow one course until successful. And what we have found is that people who lose a sense of focus, they become scatterbrained. You know, the Bible even talks about um, not to be like the double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. And there's instability, at least emotional instability, when you lack a sense of direction uh, and, and focus and a chief aim for your life. Um, also, there's a sense of withdrawing from family, from friends, uh, no longer socializing and entering into certain environments uh, that were once healthy for you. You just really want to just get alone in your own space to sulk. And oftentimes that is not the best place for you. Now, I don't believe in living life by distraction. So let me just get distracted so I don't have to focus on all the negativity that's going on in my heart and my mind. I believe in living life by design, not by distraction. But you by design want to become social, want to become active, want to interact with others, want to have a new lease on life because it helps you in your recovery process. It lets you know that every day is not a 
sad day. Every day is not, gl not, not um, every day is not not cloudy and it's raining every day. There's sunshine and there's hope for a new day. And that new day, excuse me, that new day just doesn't mean a 24-hour day, but a new season in your particular relationship. Now. Other things, other post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms that people feel, it's just a feeling of hopelessness. I just feel hopeless. I feel helpless. I feel trapped. I feel like there's no way out. And when people feel that way, it causes them to participate in behaviors that they normally wouldn't do. I think there's a lot of apprehension that people have from reconnecting with their partner, and it creates a spiraling effect when things get progressively worse. So it's almost like the feelings that I have or the fear and the, the negative anticipation of what may occur again is controlling how I function in my own body and how I function in my relationship, which creates more of the negative experience that I'm hoping to avoid. So in, in essence, my thoughts and my emotions are creating a self-fulfilled prophecy of further hurt and pain because I haven't grabbed a hold of this internally to begin to work on myself. Um, but then there's also physical effects. Like a lot of people um, just have no energy. Uh, they're always fatigued. Some people get uh, um, very sick. Uh, it impacts your, your sleeping patterns. You just can't sleep or you can't sleep for too long. Uh, you suffer from um, insomnia. It may change your eating habits. There's all types of, of effects that an affair can have on a particular person. But the key is knowing how to get over and how to get through. You know, I'm sure you've heard this example all the time, that if I were to walk up to you and punch you in the face and knock you on the floor, obviously that's my fault. But if I come back two weeks later and you're still on the ground, it's your fault. And so while the hurt partner, I mean, excuse me, the unfaithful partner has his or her role to play in your recovery process, at some point you've got to make a decision to take authority over your own situation, to seek the help that you need to restore your life. So that comes through spiritual transformation, that comes through emotional healing, that comes from relational counseling, that comes from a commitment of personal growth and self-development. And I'm here to say this because as we're winding down, 2016. There are those of you who have been hopeless. You didn't think that you would make it a full year, but yet you're here. And so that lets you know that, you know what, there is another day. So either I can wake up and allow life to just do whatever it's going to do, and wherever the wind blows me is where I'm going to go, or I can be intentional with my day to live the life that I ultimately want. And so 2017 can be a major breakthrough for you. Not because, guess what? Uh, the, the clock struck 12 and all of a sudden I'm somebody different, but because I made the decision that I was going to become someone different, therefore doing something different, therefore getting a different result. I've been sharing things online about the importance of understanding the difference between your human beingness and your human doingness. Most people focus on what they have to do, but what you have to do is a result of who you are. So who you are represents your being. And so if you're in a state of being that is one of peace, one of joy, and there's a stillness within you, then you're able to function and operate in a healthy way, and then everyone in your circumference benefits. But if you're constantly depressed and down and full of fear and in misery, it impacts everything you do and everyone around you. And so I just want to give you hope. I want to give you hope to let you know that there have been many people, even though I went through all of the negative consequences uh, that can take place in an affair, we dealt with some of the emotional trauma and the triggers that people experience, there does not have to be any residue from your past as you enter into your future. There doesn't. Because if you go through the process that is necessary for you, you can completely be healed and restored. You have all of the tools accessible for you. Just tuning in on a weekly basis. I'm here to help you understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling, what the issues are, but then you gotta figure out how do I get out of this situation? And you can do that by taking the proper steps and measures for your personal recovery process. So get the book, The Audacity of Marriage, because it gives you a blueprint of what you can begin to do to heal yourself. We're gonna be talking about how do you heal a hurt relationship, but how do you heal a hurt individual within the relationship? We're gonna be talking about how to break old patterns and start new ones. We're gonna be talking about how to reconnect, not only with your spouse, but with your God. We've seen so many people whose relationships with God have been impacted when they've gone through trauma, that somehow, 
running away from the church. We think that that's the answer. And so we don't go to church anymore, maybe because of fear or maybe because of shame or humility, whatever the case may be. But I'm here to let you know that you can have a brand new year if you are intentional about what it is that you want to do. And healing, healing is just a decision away. All you have to do is decide. You may not know the how, but all you need to have is a strong enough why. Because if you have a strong enough why for what you want, you can endure any how that may come your way. And so things become less complicated, less of a struggle, less hard when you have a strong burning desire for what it is that you want. So if you want your own personal healing, if you want relational recovery, if you want a new lease on life, if you want 2017 to be the best year you've ever had, if you want to fulfill purpose and destiny for your life, understand that you are not your past. You are not what happened to you. You are not a victim. You are a victor. And all you have to do is have a strong belief. And all you have to do is surround yourself with the right people to be in the right environment. We call it a system of support and accountability that will help you get from where you are and catapult you to where you want to be. So listen, I encourage you to continue to tune in, continue to read, continue to search, continue to seek, continue to research. Whatever you have to do to get what you want, if you have a strong enough desire for it, you will have it. I've learned that there's nothing that I can't have because the Bible tells me that I can do all things through Christ. Now, how could I believe that when it comes to my career, when it comes to my education, when it comes to my personal pursuits, but somehow I want to give up caving and quit when it comes to my marriage. How is it that the same faith that I apply to every situation in my life, and I believe it's possible for me, and I have many examples of it working in my life that somehow my hands go up and I give up all hope when it comes to my marriage. You've got to have a marriage mindset. You've got to know that the same God that was able to resurrect the dead is the same God that can resurrect your marriage. But but it requires that you become a willing participant, that you have to partner with God's will to make it happen. So for all those that are looking up, expecting God to do it all, that's when you fail. Because God doesn't work like that. He does not work for you. He works through you. As long as his spirit dwells within you, and as long as you have access to his system, the kingdom of God and all the keys, and you work it, you can receive manifestation in your marriage, in your life, in your business, and in, in every single area of your life, the decision is yours. So that was my word of encouragement because in December and January, those are the two most pressing months of the year for couples because statistically that's when more divorces happen during those two months than any other month of the year. So I want to encourage you to stay strong, to keep the faith. You've got to be willing and determined to do whatever it takes to get your breakthrough. And guess what? You can have it. So if you're seeking help, I would highly recommend that you seek a professional that has the knowledge and the skill sets to give you what you need for recovery. There's a lot of great people out there, but a lot of people have general marital principles that can help you in your relationship. But when it comes to a fair recovery, it's a special uh, and a very unique um, type of skill set. So seek those who have your answer. Stop talking to people who represent or share your problem and go to those who represent your solution and have your answer. So I want to encourage you as we end, um, we have one more week to go before we end this year. So I have one more special message for you, but I hope that you heard something here that was motivating enough to get you to just live and work out just another day. Because if you can make it to the next day, guess what? You have enough determination and strength to make it to another day. And guess what? When you do that, you have everything you need within you to get what it is that you want. So thank you, Facebook. Love you. Let's stay connected. I want you to go over to the Audacity of Marriage group and make sure you join because 2017 is going to be exactly what you need to give you what you want for your life and for your marriage. Good night.